Northern Allen Video Record. Today is August the 2nd, 2016. The time is 1.20 p.m. It's beginning of take number one. My name is Jeb Butler. I'm here on behalf of the plaintiff, Michael Ellis. My name is Brent Terry. I'm here on behalf of the defendants, JJ's of Atlanta, LLC, and Chris Coulter. All right. Jennifer, would you swear the witness, please? Raise your hand, please. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this cause to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. State your name for the record, please. And my name is Jacob Holly. What is your position or um, title? General manager at the Midtown location. Of Jimmy John's? Mm -hmm. um, during the course of this case, Jimmy John's provided me with a chart or a short list of organizational structure, and I believe I've highlighted your name there. Uh, Jacob Holly, is that you? Yes, sir. All right. Um, do you know these other guys? Do you know Chris Arbaugh? <coughs> yeah, I worked uh, directly for him. He's my uh, supervisor. Do you uh, know Rommel Niles and Andrew Wilson? Yes, they're my assistant managers. What are your duties at Jimmy John's? Uh, basically, I run the store and all the um, everything that goes on. You know, I do hiring, firing if necessary, um, daily operations, uh, make sandwiches all day, basically. Are you in charge or do you have some role in the delivery of Jimmy John's sandwiches and overseeing the delivery drivers? Yes, I do. Delivery drivers in Jimmy John's terminology, as I understand it, includes the bicycle delivery agents. Yes, sir. Right? We call them drivers as well. Okay. Um, do you know that Jimmy John's has chosen you to testify on behalf of the corporation? Yes, I do. Uh, did you know that we, that is Mr. Ellis and his lawyer, which is me, gave Jimmy John's a list of areas we wanted to ask questions about and they chose you to answer them? Yes, sir. And the answers that you give today are the answers of Jimmy John's. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you now what's been marked as Plans Exhibit 2. This is a copy of your amended notice of video deposition. It's amended to state a, a place and time convenient to you. Uh, have you seen this document before? Uh, I have. Okay. Isn't it true that Jimmy John's makes a profit by advertising how fast its delivery is? Yes, it's true. Uh, in fact, Jimmy John's repeatedly advertises that its delivery is, quote, freaky fast, end quote, or, quote, so fast you'll freak, end quote. Yes, sir. And Jimmy John's advertises those things to get more customers and thereby make more profit, right? That's right. And in fact, Jimmy John's puts those two slogans on uh, all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you an exhibit now, which I'll mark as plans exhibit number three. And what this exhibit shows us is that Jimmy John's puts those slogans advertising the speed of its delivery on cups and sandwich wrappers and um, sandwich bags and even napkins, right? Uh, yes, sir. Now, you know what this case is about, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, did you know that my client, Michael Ellis, was struck by somebody on a bicycle and knocked down? Yes, I do. Uh, did you know it shattered his elbow? Um, I didn't know the extent of his, energy, or, or his injuries. Well, let me show you what I'll mark as plans exhibit number four. This is something that we've shared with Jimmy Johns. And I represent to you that that is a x-ray or MRI, some kind of medical image of Mr. Ellis's elbow after surgery. Have you ever seen that before? Seen this picture or anything like it? Seen this picture before of Mr. I've, yeah, I've seen this one. Did you know that this is what happened to Mr. Ellis's elbow after he was struck by the bicyclist? Um, yes. Okay. Is Jimmy John's prepared to accept responsibility for the injuries that its bicycle delivery agent caused to Mr. Ellis? Let me just object to form. Um, first of all, that question is beyond the scope of the 30B6 notice uh, that was delivered and the topics listed that this witness is here prepared to testify about and is authorized to testify about by Jimmy John's. Um, and therefore, uh, it also calls for legal conclusion in terms of responsibility, and so I instruct the witness not to answer. To the extent a response is required, I direct you, Mr. Terry, to the notice in small Roman numeral 5, which says that this witness should testify about, quote, 
JJ's responsibility for the injuries sustained by plaintiff, end quote. I see what you're saying. Um, that was not interpreted as whether Jimmy Johns was prepared to come here and make an admission as to responsibility, as you know from the answer that's been filed. Uh, that has been denied, at least at this point. Um, and this witness is not prepared to testify uh, or certainly to make admissions and is not authorized by Jimmy Johns to come in and make admissions uh, um, on, on behalf of the company with regard to responsibility or liability for the injuries sustained by the plaintiff. Well, I don't think Jimmy Johns can direct his 30B6 designee not to testify about the things he designated to testify about. Um, however, I think our positions are stated on the record. What I'm going to do now is ask some questions about it. And I'll give you a standing objection on the same grounds to the next time I circle around and ask about responsibility. That's fine. That's fine. Oh. I, you know, I'm not going to let him answer questions about it. So go ahead and ask your next question, and we'll deal with it as it goes along. Okay. Um, do you understand from Jimmy John's lawyer, Mr. Holly, that Jimmy John's has denied responsibility for the injuries to Mr. Ellis? Yes, I understand. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. So it's your position then that Jimmy Johns denies responsibility for the injuries to Mr. Ellis? Yes. Very well. Uh, does Jimmy Johns deny responsibility for Mr. Ellis's medical bills? Yes. What about his pain and suffering? Yes. Does Jimmy Johns also deny responsibility for the changes to Mr. Ellis's life, uh, that is the things he can't do anymore following this collision? Yes. All right. Are you aware that uh, we have been able to obtain some surveillance video from a nearby establishment called Metropolis Condominiums um, that's relevant to this collision. I was not aware of that. Did you know that we sent a subpoena and sent a copy of the subpoena uh, to Jimmy Johns seeking that surveillance video? Yes. You did know that? Um, I believe so, right? Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna show you some of that video here in just a second, but before I do, I'm going to show you an image of the area where it's shot. I'm going to mark this image as Plaintiff's Exhibit number five. Now, Plaintiff's Exhibit number five shows uh, the Jimmy John store that you manage, right? That's correct. And it shows, um, if we're taking the vantage point of the picture, to the left, Jimmy John's, you can see UPS. To the right, you can see Nukes, and then the sign there for Fado's Irish Pub, right? Mm hmm And we'll draw your attention in particular to two signs that are going to be visible in the video we're about to watch. The one on the right there is the sign for Fado's Irish Pub. It's kind of hanging out over the sidewalk. And the one on the left is the sign for Jimmy John's that is similarly hanging out over the sidewalk, right? That's correct. All right. And I will show you some video now. Let's go off video record while I get this set up. Off video record. Back on video record. Mr. Holly, I'm going to show you um, some video now. This video comes from a thumb drive, which I've marked as Plants Exhibit 6, and I'm going to show you uh, some video taken from the south angle here. Can you see it on your screen in front of you? I can. All right. Um, now, before we even get started, at the very outset of the video, you can see in the top right here uh, the sign for Fado's Irish Pub, right? That's correct. And sort of beyond that, you can see the circular sign for Jimmy John's, right? Mm -hmm. You can just see part of it. Yeah, you can see the one J on it. Right. Okay. Um, and that's the Jimmy John's at 925 Peach Street, right? It appears to be. Okay. And we'll hit play. And then we'll stop it partway through and ask you some questions. We've watched now the first 15 seconds of the video, right? Yes. And you can see uh, what appears to be a Jimmy John's delivery agent coming out of Jimmy John's, right? Yes. He's got on his bicycle helmet and his backpack, and he's now uh, messing with his bicycle, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to play it again, 
and I want you to watch as the, as the bicyclist, the Jimmy John's delivery agent, takes off down the street. In particular, watch as he moves away and toward the top right of the screen, because what we'll see down there, uh, although it's partially obscured, unfortunately, by these trees, is I think we'll see some kind of collision. But I'll ask, I'll play that, then ask you about it. All right, the video has now ended. Were you able to see that little uh, collision at the end there? Mm, not really. Um, is there any way to enlarge it? No, unfortunately, there's really not. Um, my question for you is, did it appear to you that at the end of that video, the uh, de bicycle delivery agent collided with something? Uh, can I see the video again? Sure. We'll start. We don't need the whole thing. We'll start here at 28 seconds. I don't know. Watch looks, that as many times as you want to. Yeah, let me say it one more time because it's sure. just it's just kind of uh can't really see it that well. Why does it pause right there? To answer your question about why it pauses, I don't know. It has something to do with the way the video got delivered to us from the security camera. Okay. So the question for you is, does it appear that the Jimmy John's bicycle delivery agent collides with something there at the end of that video clip? It was unclear to me. Um, I couldn't tell if, if, you know, it was another person crossing the street or I just couldn't really tell that there was a collision there. What do you think happens at the end of that video? Objective form calls for speculation, but subject to that, you can answer if possible. Um, I don't want to speculate as to what happens. hard to see it. Can you tell um, at all what happens at the end of that video? Um, looks like someone was crossing the street, but I couldn't see a direct collision. So it looked like someone was crossing the street? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, did it look possible that the Jimmy John's bicycle delivery agent collided with that person who was crossing the street? Objective form calls for speculation, but subject to that, you can answer if possible. Um, I do not wish to speculate on that. It's hard to tell from the video. The question was, do you believe it is possible is that... The, let me finish the question. Yeah, yeah. i tell you what, I'll give you a standing objection to speculation to the following question. Okay, that's fine. Um, do you believe, after watching that video, that it is possible that the Jimmy John's bicycle delivery agent collided with the person who appeared to be crossing the street? Could be possible, but it seemed out of view to me. All right, let's go off video and I'll move all this down. We're done with video. Going off video record. Back on video record. Now, Jimmy Johns has a bicycle delivery agent who has admitted that he ran into a pedestrian, right? Yes, um, the location was on West Peachtree, though. It wasn't the location that, uh, well, let me ask you question. a few questions about that. The, the Jimmy Johns bicycle delivery agent who ran into someone was Noah Shell, right? That's correct. Uh, Noah Shell is a male. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a yes? Yes. Yeah, you need to say yes or no. Got it. Yeah. And uh, well, we at least know that the person in the video that we watched was a male, right? That's correct. Now, um, someone at Jimmy John's, not me, interviewed Noah Shell about this, right? Um, he came forward uh, during the investigation. Well, who talked to Noah Shell? I spoke with him. All right. Uh, now. Mr. Shell wasn't sure what date the collision occurred. That's Is that correct? correct? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't exactly sure of the place either, was he? Although he disagreed with plaintiff's recollection of it. He was sure it was on West Peachtree Street. Well, let me show you a document here. Um, and I will mark this as plaintiff's exhibit number seven.
this I'll represent to you is a um, interrogatory response. And the way this works is we, Mr. Ellis and his lawyers, are asked questions of Jimmy John's and they send us back these written responses. And this is a written response that we received, as you can see in the top right, on July 27, 2016, just a few days ago. Now, turn with me uh, to page two of four, if you will, and you'll see some highlighted language at the bottom. Page two of four, which would be this. There you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that, start reading with the highlighted language, and then I'm going to ask you when I stop whether I read it correctly. It says, quote, During interviews with active employees, bicycle delivery agent Noah Shell indicated that he recalled being involved in an incident where he had bumped into someone and knocked them down. Mr. Shell could not recall the date of the incident. Mr. Shell could not recall the exact location of the incident, but indicated that it occurred near West Peachtree Street, rather than at the location where plaintiff alleges that the subject incident took place. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. Now, Noah Shell is a Jimmy John's employee, right? Uh, he was an employee. Is he not an employee anymore? No, he's not. When did he stop being an employee? Um, I think it was around uh, April. All right. Uh, why is Mr. Shell no longer an employee of Jimmy John's? We had a disagreement that resulted in his... Uh, in his quitting of the job. What was the nature of that disagreement? He felt like he was getting uh, cheated on deliveries by another driver, um, which happens sometimes. But Okay. Well, anyway, I wanted to go through something else that Jimmy John's produced to us in this litigation. I'm going to mark it as plaintiff's exhibit number eight. Now, this collision with um, Mr. Ellis occurred on January 25. You knew that, right? Yes. And it occurred around 12.45 in the afternoon, right around lunchtime, right? Okay. Were you aware of that? I did not. I was not aware of the time. Do you have any reason to disagree with that? No. I will show you now uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 8, and that's a Jimmy John's attendance report, right? That's correct. And you can see, if you look in the top right, the report date gives the date it was printed, but then it says date range, and it says that this attendance report is for January 25 of 2016, right? That's correct. Now turn with me please to the third page. And this line here that's highlighted uh, says Noah Shell, employee number 1393, right? That's correct. And this says that Noah Shell was on duty on January 25, 2016 from 10.57 a.m to 6.21 p.m., is that right? Uh, that's correct. All right, thank you. Now, Noah Shell didn't say anything, did he, about the color of the light at the intersection where he collided with a pedestrian, did he? No, he did not. We uh, have already talked about one video in this case, the surveillance video, right? You remember that? Uh, yes. Now, um, that wasn't the only video taken in this area on the day of the collision, was it? Um, I don't know if we have any other records of the, the video. Do we have any other videos? Well, now, Jimmy John's has video cameras, doesn't it? Yes, we do. In fact, Jimmy John's has video cameras from inside the store. Yes, we do. Those video cameras could have shown Noah's shell leaving the store. Possibly, yeah. Um, where are those videos? The videos, um, when we received the uh, subpoena for the videos, uh, had already rewritten on the uh, hard drive. Well, let's talk about that. I, I suppose what you're saying is that Jimmy Johns no longer has the video from <clears throat> the date of the collision. Is that right? That's correct. Now, um, we asked Jimmy Johns for that video, didn't we? Uh, yes, but it was at a time later than... Um, or after the videos had already deleted themselves. Well, this collision, as we've established, occurred on January 25, right? That's correct. And I'm going to show you Plans Exhibit 9. That's a letter dated January 28, right? Yes, it is. And that's just three days later. We did not receive this letter until a week after the incident. Um, 
Well, let me, I'll, I'll return to that in just a second, but first, uh, let me confirm this. This letter, dated January 28, 2016, from me to Jimmy Johns, asked Jimmy Johns to preserve evidence, including security or surveillance videos, right? That's highlighted. Yes. Now, you see how it says via certified mail up there? Yes. I'm going to show you what I'll mark as exhibit number 10. And I'll represent to you this is a copy of both sides of a, what you call a little a mail receipt. Um, and on the first page here of Plaintiff's Exhibit, Number 10, at the bottom left, it says Ellis spoliation, right? Yes, it does. Spoliation reserves to preserving or destroying evidence. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Well, anyway, up here on the first page, it says 30 January 16. Do you see that? Uh, yes, I do. And then the second page says the article was addressed to Jimmy Johns, right? Yes, it does. Isn't it true that Jimmy Johns has a responsibility to make sure that its bicycle delivery agents are safe in what they do? That's correct. And in fact, Jimmy Johns has a responsibility to the public, including to pedestrians like Mr. Ellis, to make sure they're not hit by speeding Jimmy Johns' bicycles. That's true. Jimmy Johns has to know what the safety rules are so that Jimmy Johns can teach those safety rules to its bicycle delivery agents, right? Yes, sir. I mean, if, if Jimmy John's management doesn't know the rules, then Jimmy John's can't teach those safety rules to its delivery people. Perhaps. Do you agree with that? I do agree. Uh, and the truth is that someone operating a bicycle has to exercise reasonable care and obey the rules of the road, right? That's right. And the rules of the road require that drivers of bicycles, even, yield to pedestrians who are in crosswalks. Isn't that correct? That's Obje correct. Object to form calls for legal conclusion that may be beyond the scope of this witness's knowledge. Subject to that, you can answer. Um, I think you inadvertently <coughs> stepped on the answer a little bit. So Sorry. I'll get, it's no problem. I'll again. give you a standing objection to the same question and ask it again. Okay. Isn't it true that the rules... Of, let me pause so we can cut the video. Isn't it true that the rules of the road require that drivers, even of bicycles, yield to pedestrians in crosswalks? Yes. Isn't it also true, Mr. Holly, that well before, long before, a Jimmy Johns agent collided with Mr. Ellis on January 25, 2016, Jimmy Johns knew that its bicyclists were unsafe but refused to do anything about it? That's not true. Well, now, isn't it true that people had been complaining for years about Jimmy Johns bicycle delivery agents? Let me just make an objection, just for clarity's sake. When you're just so when you're referring to Jimmy John's, you're talking about their particular store. I know that's probably pretty obvious, but is that correct? Because as you know, Jimmy John's is a national franchise, and there are a number of stores that have nothing to do with my clients, and so on. These questions go to notice, and I think the question was clear as asked. Here's the question: Isn't it true that people have been complaining for years about Jimmy John's bicycle delivery agents before this collision? with Mr. Ellis. Well, I'll just object to form then. That I think the question is vague to the extent that when you refer to Jimmy John's, uh, that uh, Jimmy John's is a national, perhaps international organization that goes, uh, that, you know, goes well beyond the scope of my clients here. However, subject to that, Jacob, you can answer his question. Let me clean it up a second. Um, to the extent responses require, what we're getting at here is the, is the notice that Jimmy John's indisputably has and has produced us in discovery. Uh, that said, your, your objection is on the record. Uh, I'm going to ask it again so we have a clean video. I'll give you a standing objection to the, on the same basis. That's fine. Isn't it true? And I got a pause for the cutting. Isn't it true that even before the collision with Mr. Ellis, people have been, been complaining for years about Jimmy John's bicycle delivery agents? We've received a few complaints over the years. How many? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many that we uh, we gave or how many that we've received that specifically, you know, have to do with bicycle deliveries. Um, you know, we receive complaints about other, you know, sandwich making and incorrect sandwiches and stuff like that. Well, I'm talking about the bicycles. About how many do you think it was? 
I think um, as far as complaints, that we've only received about five in the past two or three years, but I'm not positive. Well, let's go through a few. I will show you now what I've marked as plaintiff's exhibit number 11. Thank you. And that's a complaint to Jimmy John's, right? Doesn't it say Jimmy John's complaint up at the top? Uh, yes, it does. And here the complaint comes from a customer named L.H. Burns, right? Yes, it does. And what L.H. Burns had to say uh, was as follows, quote, the bicyclists that deliver for 925A Peachtree Street Northeast are ridiculous. Even though your ass is on a bike, you still have to abide by the laws of the road. They ride against traffic, run red lights, go up sidewalks at all. At first, I was concerned for their safe safety. Now I just want to clothesline them. Isn't that what it says? That's what it says. And then the store has, um, Jimmy John's had an action plan for this. It says at the bottom here, highlighted, Chris has agreed to reiterate for his bikers to follow the rules of the road and be safe for themselves and pedestrians. He has agreed to monitor his, his bikers daily. Isn't that what it says? Yes, it does. Now, Chris here, does that refer to Chris Arbaugh, that area manager that we talked about earlier? That's unclear. I'm not sure. Could it refer to Chris Coulter, the owner? Well, I'm not sure exactly who they were uh, referring to on that. Well, who reiterated to the bikers to follow the rules of the road? It would have been me as the general manager. Did you do that, reiterate to the bikers to follow the rules of the road? Yes. Do you specifically remember doing that? Um, on this occasion, being it's over two years old, I don't recall exactly. And this looks like it was before I was the general manager at that store, so I wouldn't be able to um, explain anything on this complaint. So this, this complaint was before you were the general manager on the store? Yes, sir. So you did not, as in response to this complaint, reiterate to the bikers to follow the rules of the road because you weren't working there yet? I, I do for normal for complaints that I, like, while I'm working there. So this is, I didn't realize that this was 2014 on this complaint. Can you tell us who Chris is? It should be Chris Coulter. He would have been uh, working at that store at that time. He's the part owner, right? Yes, sir. Now, let's look at plans exhibit number 12. This is another complaint to Jimmy Johns, right? Yes, it is. And here, uh, the person who wrote the complaint is Ben Ettinger, right? It says that on page two. Yes, it is. And what Mr. Ettinger had to say is, quote, I'm writing to express my concern about your delivery people riding bicycles on the sidewalks in Atlanta. Riding on the sidewalk is illegal under Georgia law, he gives a citation, and poses a serious danger to pedestrians. He says, I've spoken with the general manager, Jacob, of multiple Midtown Jimmy John stores, and he was flippant, dismissive, and protested that he was, has no way of enforcing a policy against riding of the sidewalks. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. Are you Jacob? Yes, I am. What specific action did Jimmy Johns take after receiving that complaint to ensure that its bicycle delivery people started driving more safely? We re-educated the, the staff that they need to follow the rules of the road or they will be terminated. Well, that was in October of 2015, right? Yes. Well, let's look at Plans Exhibit uh, number 13. This is from the very next month, November of 2015, right? Yes. And this is another complaint, right? Yes. This comes from a fellow named Bill Moss, right? Yes, it does. And tell us, tell us if I read correctly what Mr. Moss had to say. Quote, I'm not sure what kind of safety training your cyclist delivery drivers receive, but I constantly see them breaking the law, not stopping at lights, weaving between stop traffic, riding on sidewalks, weaving in and out among pedestrians, illegal in Georgia, riding opposite direction to traffic in bike lanes, etc. If you can't figure out how to get this under control, I will stop 
ordering from Jimmy John's. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. Let me show you the next one, which I've marked. I do want to say something about Exhibit 13. Um, that location we do not deliver to. So that would have been a different store that this complaint is about. Do you dispute that Jimmy John's, uh, the defendant in this case, had access to the record that was marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 13? I'll object to form because Jimmy John's is not the defendant in this case. The defendants in this case are JJ's of Atlanta LLC and Chris Coulter. But subject to that, you can answer. Let me rephrase. Possible. Let me rephrase the question. Do you dispute that the defendant in this case had access to the uh, record that is Plaintiff's Exhibit 13? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, if I tell you that the Jimmy Johns, who is a defendant in this case, produced, that is, gave Planet Exhibit 13 uh, to us in this case, would that surprise you? Uh, yes, considering that it's not, it does not look like it should have been sent to our store. Well, if, if Jimmy Johns, the defendant in this case, uh, gave Planet Exhibit 13 to us, doesn't that suggest that Jimmy Johns, the defendant in this case, had Planet Exhibit 13? Uh, maybe they didn't realize the address of the uh, complaint or where the person that sent the complaint in. They didn't realize where uh, the address was and that it was outside of our delivery area. This is what I'm trying to ask. If the defendant, in this case, gave us the document, then the defendant obviously had the document, correct? That's correct. Now, do you have Plaintiff's Exhibit 14 in front of you? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now you do. Plaintiff's Exhibit 14 is another complaint uh, uh, relating to Jimmy Johns, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll represent to you this is another one that the defendant produced to us. And this one comes from a man named Paul Johnson, right? Yes, it is. And he also has some comments about bicyclists, and we've got a few of these, so I'll keep it short. But part of what he had to say was, quote, I have asked the manager to take some action but have seen no changes, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. All right. Again, this is an address outside of our delivery area, our store's delivery area. Let me show you what I've marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit number 15. This is another complaint to Jimmy Johns, right? Yes, it is. And this is from uh, a woman named Karen Kenner, right? Yes, it is. And what she had to say was, quote, I was hit in my back by one of your bikers this afternoon at the intersection of Pryor Street and MLK. My co-workers witnessed everything, and there are cameras at the intersection since it is by the courthouse. The employee would only tell me that her name was Harmony. I am in pain and shocked by her response. She did not get off her bike once. I am not sure where to go from here, but her behavior was unacceptable. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. Again, I wouldn't have knowledge of this complaint since it is outside of um, my store's delivery area. Let me show you what I've marked as plaintiff's exhibit number 16. This is another complaint to Jimmy Johns, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is from a woman named Abby Hughes, right? Yes, it is. And what this complaint shows us is that even after this collision, and even after we filed this complaint and this lawsuit on behalf of Mr. Ellis, Jimmy John still failed to fix the problem of its dangerous bicycle delivery agents. Isn't that true? It seems that we've had a few incidents after, the, um, after you guys filed. So Jimmy John's failed to fix the problem, right? Not completely. Well, let's just look at what the complaint has to say. The, um, this is dated May 17 of 2016, right? That's correct. That's after this case was filed, right? That's correct. And what uh, Abby Hughes had to say was the following, quote, I'm concerned about the delivery cyclists that failed to follow Georgia bike laws in Midtown Atlanta coming from 925 Peachtree Street. One delivery person moved from the road, didn't stop on red, to the crosswalk, and almost hit my car as I was turning. She would have been at fault had that happened. Cyclists must walk their bikes across crosswalks, and only children under 12 are legally allowed to ride on the sidewalk. And Jimmy Johns would be liable for this accident as well. I think using cyclists to deliver food is great, but not when the delivery personnel aren't well versed in cycling safety. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. Let's go off video record and let me review my notes. I suspect that's going to be it. 
back on video record. No further questions. Okay, I have a few uh, for you, Jacob. Um, what exhibit number was the certified mail receipt? It was a two-page exhibit. I just want to ask you to pull that out. Oh, mm -hmm. Exhibit 10. Exhibit 10, okay. Now, looking at the front of Exhibit 10, I think you were asked about the date stamp on the top left-hand corner uh, of the of the receipt that says 30 January 16. You see where I'm referring to? Yes, I see that. Do you know uh, who stamped that there? No, I don't. Do you know when that was stamped there? Um, no, I don't. Do you know how long after that was stamped there that the this uh, the, the mailing with which this receipt is associated was received by Jimmy Johns at 925 Peachtree Street Northeast? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, if you could turn to page two of that exhibit, <clears throat> you see in the top right-hand corner it says complete this section on delivery and then it has signature received and, and such. Yes, I see that. Okay, under A, signature, do you recognize that signature? I do not recognize that. Okay, under B, received, it's, it says printed name, but do you recognize that signature or that writing? No, I do not. It, it, are those, either of those your handwriting or your name? Do no, you I did not sign this. Okay, and then what does it say in terms of the date of delivery? Under letter C. Uh, it's got an X on it. Is there a date written there? There's no date. So from looking at, at this exhibit, either page one or page two, can you tell when um, the mailing with which this receipt was associated was received by Jimmy Johns? It's not clear when it was received. Okay. Now, I think you mentioned that uh, Jimmy John's, um, your store, um, at, at 925 Peachtree Street Northeast does have a uh, video surveillance system? Yes, we do. And where is that located? It's located in the back office. Um, where are the cameras located? Uh, we have cameras throughout the lobby. Okay. Are there any cameras that show uh, the outside of the, that are located outside of the store? There's one camera where you can see the front door through the glass, but there's no outside cameras. You mean, is that, okay, the camera is located inside the store? But it points towards the front door. Points towards the front door, mm -hmm. okay. And so you can see through the glass to the sidewalk and street out in front of it? Yes, them. but our storefront's very small, so you can't really see that much. Okay. Does Jimmy John's have any video that you're aware of, at least, uh, that would have shown the, the same area um, uh, that we looked at uh, in the the video here in your deposition earlier today up near the end of the video where the trees were and where you, you were being asked about what you could see and if you could tell what happened no we wouldn't have any cameras in that area okay now in that video that we reviewed um, you do recall it showed uh, it looks like a bicycle delivery driver um, coming out of the your store mm -hmm. and then yes driving or heading up the street on on his bicycle yes do you recognize did you recognize that delivery person i did who was it uh his name's noah shell that was noah shell yes it okay was. all right um <clears throat> did noah shell report any incident to you occurring on january 25th 2016 no he did not at that location no not okay all right but he did report to you um uh, or an incident that he indicated happened near West Peachtree Street? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, now, looking at the, I think, exhibits 11 through 16, which were the complaint forms, I believe there are a total of six complaint forms, is that correct, that you looked at? Yes. Okay. Now, how many of those, uh, well, you described a number of those as being outside the delivery area for the store. How That's, many How mm -hmm. many of those did that apply to? Let me see here.
only two of these complaints uh, were regarding our store. Okay, which, which ones were those that regarded your store? Exhibit 11, um, and that's the one that... Uh, Can you give us the date and the name of the customer? Yeah, Exhibit 11, um, the date was 5-23-14, and the name of the customer is L.H. Burns. Okay. And then what is the other one that applied to your store? The date on this one is 10-14-15, uh, and uh, the name on the, of that customer was Ben Edinger. And what was the number of that exhibit? Exhibit of 12. 12. And then, well, let me, let me have you look at Exhibit 16. Uh, is, is that regarding your store as well? The one... Uh, okay, yeah, that one is as well. Okay. Her mm -hmm. uh, address was... Uh, I was looking at her address. Okay. So three of the six forms you looked at um, dealt with your store, and three did not? That's correct. Tell me what you meant when you say that on the three that did not, which I guess would be exhibits um, 13, 14, and 15, um, what do you mean when you say that, that those were outside the delivery area for your store? Uh, we have specific guidelines as to where uh, my store can deliver, and um, these are out of those guidelines. Okay, what do you mean? Who, who sets those guidelines? Uh, they're set by the corporate office when the store opens. Okay. So there's a specific geographic location you're allowed to deliver in? Yes. Um, are there other Jimmy John stores that um, are associated with JJ's of Atlanta LLC or Chris Coulter um, that uh, are in, that have geographic areas adjacent to yours? Yes. Okay. Um, do any of these um, complaints, do they deal with other JJ's of Atlanta stores, to your knowledge, the ones you said were out the, outside the delivery area for your specific store? Uh, to my knowledge, um, Exhibit 15 and 14 okay. are also uh, stores that are owned by the same company, uh, but Exhibit 13, I'm not sure if they have, um, this looks like their house location, so I'm not sure if that was the delivery location. That one would have been out of all of our areas. Okay. Are there other Jimmy John stores in the area that you're aware of that are not associated with JJ's of Atlanta? Uh, yes. Okay. Are there, do, to your knowledge, do they have bicycle delivery? Yes, they do. Drivers. Okay. Do those, to your knowledge, do those dr dr uh, bicycle delivery uh, agents deliver in the area of your store or, or drive or ride through that area? They ride through that area. Um, Peachtree Street is a main street through Atlanta, so a lot of the other stores travel, or you know, the employees will travel to and from work um, through Peachtree Street. Okay, all right. Um, oh, in, uh, let me have you look at exhibit 12. I believe is the one dated October 14th, 2015 from a Ben Ettinger. Okay. Now on page two of that exhibit is where you looked at the, the highlighted language where it talked about I've spoken with the general manager, Jacob, um, and he was flippant, dismissive, and protested. And you can see what was, what was written. Do you recall that complaint or that conversation with Mr. Ettinger? Um, I do recall. It's been a while. Um, but he was pretty rude on the phone. I don't remember. I don't recall exactly how the conversation went. But obviously, he was not happy with the, uh, the way the conversation went. Did you, in your opinion, at least, did you behave in a way that that you thought was flippant, dismissive, uh, or protested that you had no way to enforce a policy of the delivery drivers riding on sidewalks? No, I would have never said that. Do. Uh, does uh, your store, since you've been there as general manager, do you attempt to, you know, educate the drivers and supervise them and uh, regarding the rules of the road, including riding on sidewalks, whether they can or cannot? Absolutely. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think that's all the questions I have right now for you, Mr. Holly. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Going off of your record, the time is 2.11 p.m.